Coming up on today's show, General Motors begins deliveries of the 2017 Chevrolet Volt EV, Uber launches a new autonomous vehicle service in San Francisco and then promptly gets itself in trouble with the state's DMV, and Faraday Future gets hit with a $10 million lawsuit for not paying its bills. These stories and more next on 10. Like all of our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, December 16th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with the good news that General Motors has officially begun deliveries of the 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV long range electric car to customers in California. The first deliveries, which took place on Tuesday this week, were to a trio of customers in the San Francisco Bay Area and included a customer who lived in Fremont, the city where Tesla makes its range of electric cars. Coincidence? We think not, especially given how keen GM has been to give the not-so-subtle finger to Tesla in recent months. But either way, if you're in a major city in California or Oregon, the chances are you'll soon be able to get your hands on a Bolt EV if you so wish. The rest of the US, however, will likely have to wait until the middle of next year. At first glance, you might not think that Watson, IBM's super powerful question answering machine, the one that beat Brad Rutter and Ken Jennings on Jeopardy, would not have anything to do with the automotive world. But this week, German automaker BMW announced a new partnership with IBM, which will see it place a team of BMW researchers at IBM's global headquarters for Watson Internet of Things in order to develop new ways of bridging the gap between the car and its human occupants. The goal? To leverage Watson's software subroutines to make it easier and more natural for BMW customers to converse with their car, moving beyond today's say this command to get the car to do this, towards a future where BMWs can understand the context of what they're being asked to do and respond accordingly. And of course, keep you company when the car is doing the driving and you've nobody else to talk to. With CES 2017 just a few weeks away, we're starting to hear from companies eager to premiere new cars and new car technology at the world-renowned event. And this week, we heard from California startup Lucid, previously known as Ativa, which officially unveiled its Lucid Air high-end luxury sports sedan ahead of the CES debut. From the get-go, it's clear Lucid Air wants to steal some of Tesla's glory and thanks to its 100 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack, claimed 300 plus mile range, 2.5 second 0 to 60 miles per hour time, and a quartet of electric motors developing more than one megawatt of power, it might just do that. It features a full set of autonomous driving hardware sensors too, as well as a new low energy LED headlight cluster that mimics the compound eye of some insects, as well as a more massive touchscreen displays than you could possibly want, and a 29 speaker audio system with active noise cancellation. And this is where it's less exciting. If you want one when it goes on sale, supposedly that will be 2018, you'll need to shell out $25,000 for a reservation today and pay out more than $160,000 in total for your new ride. There is a base model starting at a cool 100K some way down the line, but if you want a lucid air, the message is simple. You're going to need to earn more than a small Pacific Islands nation's GDP. Oh well. As regular viewers will be aware, French company Renault and its alliance partner Nissan have been sharing vehicle technology for many years from their mutual shareholding one another have existed. When it comes to electric vehicles, however, the two companies have followed separate paths, each developing their own vehicle platforms and technology on which their respective plug-in cars are based. But as we learned this week, that will change over the next decade, with Nissan and Renault merging their electric vehicle technologies to develop a brand new platform that will underpin future versions of the Nissan Leaf EV and Renault Zoe EV. At the moment, it appears that the next generation Nissan Leaf, or at least the longer range 60 kilowatt hour pack Leaf expected to debut in 2018, will not use this joint platform. But come 2020, Renault is expected to have a next generation Zoe based on this joint platform. And since the platform will be shared, expect overall prices to drop thanks to economy of scales. Booyah! Here's one for you. How do you go from a glorious plush launch, complete with cutesy Christmas-themed video, to getting in trouble with the California DMV in just 24 hours? 
answer, launch an autonomous vehicle pilot ride-sharing service, tell the DMV that because the car isn't really autonomous and is only really level three, that you don't need a license to test it in the state, and then have someone upload a video of one of your autonomous cars running a red light in downtown San Francisco. Sound bizarre? Well, it would, save for the fact that it actually happened this week to ride-sharing company Uber when it launched a brand new autonomous vehicle pilot program in collaboration with Volvo, just in time for the holidays. And while Uber argued that it didn't need approval from the state of California to test its vehicles in downtown San Francisco, as there would be two employees in the front seats monitoring the car at all times, the fact that one of its cars just ran a red light long after it had been changed was enough for the state to order Uber to cease its operations. Of course, we don't know if the car was driving or the human was driving, but this is a lesson on how not to launch a new autonomous vehicle program. Come on guys, play the game. Staying with the both the San Francisco Bay Area and autonomous cars, software giant Google um, Alphabet announced this week that it's renamed its autonomous vehicle program to Waymo as part of its ongoing company-wide rebranding process. As a name, Waymo is hardly inspired, but it does at least suggest that the software company is getting ready to commercialize its autonomous vehicle technology. While that may be true, however, Alphabet has actually changed its plans to launch its own autonomous vehicles, instead focusing on the technology that makes autonomous vehicles possible. Does this mean more partnerships with automakers? Probably. And if we're honest, we think it's a smart move. As many would-be automotive startups have demonstrated, it's pretty tough to bring a new vehicle to market if you're not already an established brand. B2B, meanwhile, is what Google does best. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Easily the most reliable charging network anywhere in the world, Tesla's supercharger network is fast, convenient, and most importantly to many Tesla owners, free at the point of use for life. At least, it is for those who buy their Tesla before the end of this year. But while offering free unlimited charging and fast charge times is great, it's also meant that some owners are spoiling it for others by parking their car at supercharger stations for hours at a time, sometimes even overnight, spoiling it for everyone else. Which is why Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced this week on Twitter that Tesla is going to start cracking down on those who abuse the supercharger network by either parking at a stall overnight or just using it like their own personal charging station. Although he didn't specifically call out owners, I'm guessing Tesla is going to tackle those who charge up at a nearby supercharger rather than charge at home, charge it for business, so that they can just get free electricity. It's not clear how Tesla seems to police superchargers moving forward, but here's hoping they stop the minority from spoiling it for the overwhelming majority. Over the past few years, we've witnessed a slow transformation as major automakers begin to realize that simply selling cars won't cut it in the future, especially when so many younger people are opting not to own their own vehicle. Consequentially, we've seen an explosion in car rental, car sharing, and car clubs where automakers rent specific models out to customers on a per hour basis. So far, these services have proven disruptive to the traditional car hire world. But this week, we learned that German automakers BMW and Daimler have decided to team up with a plan to merge car to go and drive now into a new, larger service that can better compete in a marketplace rapidly filling with startups wanting to help you rent a car for a few hours at a time. There are no details really as yet, but given BMW and Mercedes-Benz have competing services, it's interesting to see the two car companies join forces in the way to combat the likes of Turo, Hertz, and enterprise. We should of course note here that this isn't the first time the two auto companies have collaborated on something, but it's the first time we think that we've seen major automakers join forces in the evolving and rapidly expanding mobility solutions marketplace. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next. Earlier on in today's show, we told you about Lucid, a California startup wanting a little piece of Tesla's luxury electric car market. Well, now it's time to tell you about another car company wanting the same pie, Faraday Future, which released a teaser video this week of its pre-production test mule racing against various high-performance cars, including the Tesla Model S P100D. Faraday Future says its car, which will debut at CES, will beat the Tesla in terms of performance. And yes, the video it's showing to demonstrate does indeed show that it can beat a P100D. But look closely and you'll notice how twitchy the camouflaged car is, both at the front and the rear, making us wonder just how ready for market it really is and how drivable it is. 
And in related news, the company found itself on the end of a legal case this week when one of its automotive parts suppliers filed a $10 million lawsuit because Faraday Future has allegedly not been paying its bills on time. I'd like to try and remain confident that this company will pull through, but given all the bad news and all the rumors we've had this year, I'm starting to think it won't. Mac at the start of this year at CES 2016, German automaker Volkswagen tried to convince us all how desperately it wanted to change after Dieselgate by unveiling the latest in a long line of concept reimaginings of the iconic Volkswagen microbus. This year's version, called the Bud E, combined plenty of advanced vehicle technology with a long-range battery pack and all-wheel drive, and if we're honest, we never assumed it would make it into production. But this week, UK magazine Autocar reported that an all-electric Volkswagen microbus based on the Buddy is due to enter into production by 2020, not only helping Volkswagen move away from internal combustion engines, but also help rekindle the fondness many have had for the brand when its main products were the cute Beetle and the super versatile Type 2 microbus. There's no details on price or even launch dates, but it's got to beat a smelly old TDI, right? And finally, if you watch this show for any length of time, you'll be familiar with the kind of weird, wacky, off-the-wall publicity stunts that car companies love to do to prove to the world that they're green, eco-friendly and hip. And this week, we've got a new one to add to the list, courtesy of Nissan, a pop-up cafe in Paris where customers pay for their coffee, not with money, but by cycling on stationary electric bicycles to generate the electricity needed to pull that perfect shot. It's all part of the Renault-Nissan alliance, celebrating a total of 3 billion miles driven by their electric cars since launch. And, says Nissan, is supposed to encourage people to think about energy use, that and how energy efficient electric cars can be, of course. It's a cute gimmick, and I know it's just marketing, but it looks fun, and I'd still like a go. What about you? Coffee or not, that's your lot for today. Thanks for joining me, and please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we cannot improve. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolved. You can read our past and current articles at transportevolved.com, or you can check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates, including our regular thought of the day. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved. Every donation makes a difference, so if you can, your help is really appreciated. And with CES just three weeks away, some extra pennies to cover flights and travel so that we can cover those big stories live from the event for all of our readers will be very, very gratefully received. Right now, I'm bringing in just a little less than minimum wage, so there's not a lot of spare cash for me, so anything you can do would be gratefully received can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell your friends about our YouTube channel. As always, I will be back with another show, but it won't be next week because we're rounding up for Christmas. This is the last new show of the year. We're going to do some feature shows towards the end of the year. So I will see you in 2016. I hope you have a great holiday and a happy new year. Thanks for everyone who's been watching this year. And as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.